Have you ever noticed what a great diversity there is amongst various plant leaves? We already learned the difference between simple and compound leaves. And today we will be focusing on simple leaves and their overall shapes. Leaf shape is one important character used for plant identification. And since there are so many different leaf shapes across plant species, there are special terms used to describe these shapes. It might become intimidating, since the more advanced the resource you're looking into, the more types of leaves are presented, to the point where it might become overwhelming. But don't worry, I'm going to show you an easy way to learn to identify the leaf shapes and to remember the terms. I went out and collected a whole bunch of leaves of all the various types I could find. I left behind those that wouldn't fit into my camera frame. I laid out all the leaves and started dividing them into categories, putting similar looking leaves together. I call the first category long and narrow. The very first type is an acicular leaf. This one is quite straightforward. Think of pine needles, slender and long, resembling a needle. Next, we have long and narrow leaves, in which there is not much of a change in the width anywhere on the leaf. So if you imagine the leaf edges as two lines, they are nearly parallel to each other. These leaves are called linear, and most grass leaves are a good example of this type. If we shorten down the linear leaf, still keeping the parallel edges, but making it only two to four times longer than wide, we get an oblong leaf. I actually didn't really find any leaf I would strictly call oblong, but this heteromeles leaf is the closest one. I would call it elliptical to oblong. For the last in the category long and narrow, we have this weirdly shaped eucalyptus leaf. This is a beautiful representation of a falcade leaf, where its tip is curved to one side, creating a hook or a beak. Next is the category of leaves that are still longer than wide, but getting more rounded in shape. I found out that the vast majority of leaves I collected belong to this category. Another major thing I realized is that I was not able to clearly label all the leaves as one type. Oftentimes it's not so easy to say, as the leaf shape might be somewhere in between these types. Moreover, different leaves on one individual plant might vary in appearance, so that's why you often find descriptions such as this one, mostly elliptic to lanceolate or oblanceolate, sometimes rounded deltate or suborbiculate. So when you hear all these terms that I'm presenting you today, take it as a guide for understanding the shapes better and knowing the right terms to describe what you observe. But keep in mind that the in-between shapes are very common and sometimes you might need to use more than one term to describe the leaf that you're seeing. Okay, back to our current group. Starting with a lanceolate shape, where the leaf is longer than wide, with the widest point below the middle and then tapering towards the tip. Do you see the variety in those different types of lanceolate leaves? Some are widely lanceolate, others are narrowly lanceolate, and this salvia leaf is lanceolate with a tapered base. That's the diversity and variation I'm trying to highlight. If we flip the lanceolate leaf, we get an oblanceolate shape, where the widest point is above the middle and tapers towards the base of the leaf. Then we have ovate leaves, and as the name suggests, they come in the shape of an egg, with the widest point again below the middle. And again, if we invert the ovate leaf, similarly to what we did with the lanceolate leaf shape, we get an obovate leaf. I think you're seeing the pattern now, with the prefix ob, meaning inversely. With this leaf, we see it is in the shape of an ellipse, where it is the widest in the middle, and then equally tapering on both ends. This is an elliptic leaf, and again, leaves can be narrowly or widely elliptic. If the ellipse is broad, we talk about an oval leaf. The widest point is again in the middle, and then both ends abruptly taper. But let me stop here and ask you a question. Would you categorize this fig leaf as oval or ovate? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, moving on to the last leaf type in this category, and that's a spatulate leaf. It is a spoon-shaped leaf with a round tip that gradually tapers down towards the base. Next is the easiest category to remember, 
containing lyrae and rancinate leaves. With rancinate leaves, think of a common dandelion. The leaves have many teeth or lobes that are pointing downwards towards the base. The lobes or segments of lyrate are round and the biggest lobe is the terminal one. Lyrae leaves are typical for many plants in the family Brassicaceae. The second to the last category is that of circular leaves. If the leaf is nearly circular, we call it an orbicular leaf. A good example is this pilia, which many of you might know since it's a popular houseplant. And with this leaf shape, you can frequently notice the petiole being attached more or less to the center of the leaf as opposed to the base. If the leaf is shaped more like a kidney, with these incurved margins at the base, we call it a reniform leaf. One special shape that I still consider to belong to the circular category is more like half circular and it is a flabellate leaf. This fan-shaped leaf type is typical for gingo biloba. And now, finally the last category, triangular leaves. First, the leaves shaped as a triangle or a letter delta are called deltoid or deltate. When a leaf is more heart-shaped with curved margins around the base, creating that notch, it is called chordate. And getting back to our inversion prefix, opchordate leaves look like inverted hearts. The last two leaf types have an overall shape of an elongated triangle. First, a sagittate leaf is in the shape of an arrowhead. At its base it has two lobes pointing straight down. The family Araceae, with members such as the Syngonium, have this type of leaf. Another example is my giant Colocasia. If the lobes turn outwards as opposed to downwards, we talk about hestate leaves. So what do you think? Does it make sense to you? Or do you feel overwhelmed by all the different leaf shape names? Did it help you to see the leaves divided into subcategories? Let me know in the comments below. If you like my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to directly support my work, please consider joining my Patreon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.